you're transitioning from sort of pre-season to in-season mode now. What what's sort of your focus? What does a typical sort of week look like um, with your training? And and uh, you talked to us about um, yeah, how often, how often your clubs training and then how you fit in um, lifestyle stuff, recovery work around that. Yeah. So yeah, obviously in-season training is Tuesdays, Thursday, and then you play Saturday. So then normally, depending on how I'm feeling on the Sunday, I'll either maybe go to the gym or have an ice bath or something like that, or just go for a light, like, flush-out jog. Um, and then Monday, if I don't jog and I just do a flush-out Sunday, I'll try and do just an extra little jog on the Monday night. And then Tuesday, I'll go to gym before footy training just because it's in the program and, like, it's good to have the consistency. Like, just because you're in the season doesn't mean you can't stop going to gym you, you you still need to keep your body up to it and then wednesday is another kind of running session like optional running session in season it's more about just listening to your body and being like oh yeah i can do another bit of this or maybe i should give this one a rest mindset both mentally being able to relax and switch off but also get yourself to that point where you're really ready to go on on game day from a mental point of view what are some of your tips and tricks that you've learned over the years that you find effective in, in that space um so yeah mentally preparing as i said like primer helps me mentally prepare yep saturday mornings i'll have the shower and i might sometimes just wake up and go for a walk just to like clear the head think about the the game any any like goals that i might set myself for the game or that i've worked on during the week i'll run them through my head um but then i always just on the Friday night before, I always try and make sure I have like a heavy carb meal. So normally it's a pasta of some sort. Chuck a lot of meat and vegetables and stuff in there. Um, and then just really hydrate as well. That's another big thing about me feeling prepared. Like if I don't have enough water in my head, I like already know that I'm dehydrated. So then it makes me feel less prepared and then I feel like I get dizzy or lightheaded at times, but it's all just in the kind of, in the headspace of trying to get ready for the game and perform yeah. as best as you can. What are some roadblocks, I guess, for those niggles maybe, or um, yeah, that currently challenge that, that goal of playing every game, do you think? Um, so if I do get a niggle or something, it's obviously just listen to my body and don't be like, oh, if, if I have to miss... Obviously, I don't want to miss any games because it's in my goal. But if I have to miss one week, so I'll be all right for the rest of the season or two weeks, so I'll be all right for the rest of the season rather than having to just constantly manage it and deal with it and be training at like 70% or playing at like 70 or 80%. What were the yeah. niggles? Were they related to the ankle injury or? Yeah, so I had I had like real tight lower back, which yeah. would like spasm as I'd run because I was always trying to counterbalance and um well what's the word make up for what Comments was going on area. yeah that one yep um for my ankle what about prioritizing tasks mate what have you learned from that process what would you do differently in terms of priorities anything that you think that you can control that you could have done differently to um help your body i guess you know recover from those niggles faster or do you feel like you you were good in that space well obviously i wish i never did my ankle playing basketball so if i yep. could have, and go back in time i wouldn't have played basketball while i was particularly while i was involved in that vfl environment as well yep um but other than that i feel like i still managed my ankle as best as i could have did as much as i could for it and tried like i had the three months off and then i trained for the week before and then we played a practice match and then i played two quarters of that and then the next week was round one so I did try and fast track my recovery as quick as I could so that I would be able to play round one. But I think in hindsight, I wouldn't have rushed myself back for round one. I would have given myself a few extra rounds just so that I can be playing at 90 to 95% of my capacity. So for that six months uh, sort of goal, more specifically your role, how has that changed? How did that come about with changing the role? Is that something you brought up to the coaches that the coaches bring that up with yourself and why are you excited about playing higher up in the gate in the, the ground? Uh, I think the change of role just happened because we ha we actually have a new coach this year. Yep. We, I think one of our biggest kind of focuses this preseason is because our team doesn't really have like too much height. 
So we've just decided to become like a real running team and like move the ball through hands, link up handball and try and get that overlap run. So me building my fitness, I guess, also allows me to go higher up the ground and then with that overlap run be able to be more involved with the game rather than just being in the square and waiting for everything to happen up the field. I could be involved in something closer to our back line or the middle of the ground and then transition back down and be another option in the forward line as well.